and welcome to the Business Spotlight. This is Pat Dewar. Today, we've got an, another, ver, another issue of Dr. Mary Swift of Dallas Laser Dentistry. Today is a real unique uh, journey into how somebody can find a good dentist. And even beyond that, it really comes from, now Mary, you have, Dr. Mary, you have uh, found, I'll say it this way, you, it's not uncommon for somebody to say, hey, how I'm out I, of state, Yeah. I don't, how do I find it? Or dentist? I'm moving, what should I do? And I, you know, I always try first to uh, use my own personal resources, uh, other dentists I've met in meetings, um, uh, to find them somebody. But sometimes I don't know anybody myself to refer a patient to if they're moving away. But I did kind of come up with a checklist of uh, what you should look for when you're looking to uh, find a new dentist. Mm -hmm. um, things that I know in my profession make someone good. And I thought the public should know that. Absolutely. Um, and, and I sort of started by looking at the kinds of practices that someone could, uh, could, could be a, a member of. Private practice, that's usually one or two dentists in a small uh, private practice setting, appointment required. Um, it's uh, usually um, staffed with others that can take care of you very well throughout the profession. Clinics are the next uh, choice. That would be um, a chain of offices, and they usually employ the dentist. So the dentist, um, is, you might not see the same dentist every time you go, but they have ways of uh, saving money. They actually negotiate with insurance companies for reimbursement rates, and they are large, so they can get discounts on supplies, and they pass it on to the customer. It's kind of like the Nordstrom's and the Walmart. There's private practice and clinic. You get good care at both. It's where you want to shop. Um, and then thirdly, is your choice uh, insurance driven? Do you have to choose off of a list of providers? So that's sort of a basic overall start. What kind of practice are you looking for? Um, traditionally, private practice has been the the, the choice. Um, so then I would say after, after deciding what type of practice you want to go to, since I know more about private practice, I'm going to go down that road sure. uh, specifically. Um, and it's always, of course, best if you can get a referral from a friend or a family member um, or a coworker that might actually have the same insurance that you've got through mm -hmm. your employer uh, might be a really good referral. But Make sure you're asking somebody who has about the same temperament mm -hmm. that you do. If you're the kind of person that would put up with anything and real easygoing, and you're asking somebody who is <laughs> a control a high freak, driver, so, yeah. yeah, so so kind of get your referral from somebody that you think you would like the same people. Right. So, um, so so that's sort of a start. Then um, from there, I would look at: Do you have any special needs? TMJ. Do you have trouble with your jaw joint? Um, wheelchair accessibility. I mean, you sort of start thinking about how easy is it going to be location-wise. Um, you know, are you looking for a cosmetic dentist? Are you looking, you know, so if you have a special need, that's where I would say uh, go to the internet. Um, go to the internet, look, you know, location, look if you have any special needs, see what pops up, okay? Um, hopefully, you, you'll find what you want. Now, I would say also plug in, and I'm not the expert on the search engine optimization, but I do know that dentists will put their, establish multiple websites in order to attract um, multiple uh, searches, I guess. Right, right. Um, and so you can kind of cross-reference what they put. If you see the same person all over the place, you kind of start to wonder if they can really do it all. At least I do. Um, and so start honing and, and looking at the website. Is it professionally done? Do they offer reviews? Reviews are powerful these days. I know when I shop retail, I look at those rever I look at how many reviews, and then from there, you know, the percentage of good. Now, 
you can't please everybody. So if you see a bad review amongst, you know, a, a, a heavily weighted positive uh, review, you know, then, then you got to take it for what it's worth. You can't please everybody all the time. But reviews are very revealing nowadays. One of the things that usually pops up pretty early when you're going down that route is a directory. And I don't, I've been cautious of directories because in the sense of just, they've got 50, they got 50 dentists there in a row. And, you know, how do you differentiate? Okay. So you're saying, I'm saying step go, further mm -hmm. into their step website? Step further in, go into their website and take a look at credentialing. Um, you'll see some dentists have lots of, lots of letters behind their name, not just DDS or DMD, and you're like, what does that all mean? That means they've studied something special. And if you have a special need, you might need to go there. Uh, do they give back to the public? Do they do any kind of uh, charity work, giving back? Do they uh, participate in organized dentistry? Do they hold memberships? Are they, do they hold positions and offices within dentistry? That's all, uh, that's a few of the things that I know make for great <laughs> dentists. Well, one of the things that's going to be fun is to look at the, 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 the next few segments because you literally are going to walk somebody through, okay, searching, we're going to look at what the actual... What you expect when you pick up that phone will be next that's to right. call. And then after that, when you're sitting in the dentist's office, mm -hmm. what do you do then? So this is Pat Dewar. There's a spotlight. We'll be right back. You can become a published author. Discover a system that will lead you from idea to having your book on the bookshelves. Bob Bear pulls back the curtain at the More Power to Publish workshop. Watch and learn how to follow the step-by-step -step plan to turn your idea into a published book. Learn more at morepowertopublish.com. And welcome back to the Business Spotlight. I'm Pat Dewar. We have a great show going today with Dr. Mary Swift of Dallas Laser Dentistry. She's actually the 2011 and 2012 Cosmetic Dentist Consumer, uh, consumer Choice. Choice. Yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm so excited about that. Thank you. One of the things that tells me is that one, you actually do it right, more often than not, probably. And, but even beyond that, having had the experience where I've called your office, what would you want a client or, that is out of state, mm -hmm. somebody that's mm -hmm. you know, searching? New what the, should mm -hmm. they try mm -hmm. to find mm -hmm. when they first call that dentist and step out? Um, the, uh, thank you for mentioning the Consumer's Choice Award. That was quite an honor, and it actually does mean that we treat the consumer well. Um, and I think that's uh, imperative. Uh, uh, putting up with poor service is unacceptable. We know you can go somewhere else if you don't like us, and, and it's unacceptable. Uh, and from that first phone contact, uh, you should feel like you're wanted like you are special to that practice because in the world of dentistry the number of new patients you attract um, is your bread and butter. Mm -hmm. uh, you've got everybody else healthy. <laughs> <You're>, <laughs> <That's right. laughs> um, so anyway the first phone call is very telling. It's very revealing. Um, does the person answering the phone sound genuine? You know some Dentists want bubbly, but bubbly can be un ungenuine, disgenuine, right. <laughs> um, uh, not genuine. <laughs> right. um, so sh it should be appropriate, an appropriate amount of kindness and efficiency. Um, the, there's, there's information that needs to be gathered on that phone call to make the rest of the process smoothly information gathering and sometimes that can be monotonous when you're having to provide names and numbers and contacts and all that when really all you want to do is make an appointment okay so there should be somebody that can balance that that can uh, make a connection over the phone to get that patient comfortable giving the right information without it being pushy did it go well so yes that first contact on the phone is important plus that person was hired by the dentist that's going to be treating you. And if the dentist hired that person, then you have to think that that dentist probably likes that person, wants them around. Well, if they're abrasive and, and not, in your book, the kind of person you want handling, you know, your insurance and your appointments and your financing and the business of doing dentistry, then maybe that's not the practice. So that first phone call is very revealing. 
Um, do they want uh, do they want to make an appointment according to their rules and regulations? You have to come in at this time, and we're going to do this but not that. Um, or is it what do you need? Let me make this as easy and convenient and address your chief concern immediately. Um, I, there's uh, been some practice. Uh, transitions over the years in the early days of dentistry when insurance first came into play there was a lot of appointments several appointments before any work was actually done you, oh, just, really? it was, it, you brought the patient in and you did a full exam and then you needed the time to decipher everything and put it into a plan then you brought the patient back just for a sit down office sitting to present the treatment plan and then you finally brought them back on the third visit and started work. That doesn't work or I haven't found that to be appropriate in today's busy world where people want as few appointments as possible and they want to get what they want to get done done. Right. So not on your time but on theirs. So, um, so the, and, there, and I'm not saying that all that planning isn't necessary in a lot of situations but in my office in particular we want to get them in we want to get them in and address what concerns them you can always take a step back mm -hmm. and say I see this this is what's going on if this is going on here maybe we should look at everything you know and, and make a, a long-term plan but do they get you in do they get you in quickly efficiently um, and and do they make you feel comfortable on the phone at that first contact it is are there, are there any other steps that you would encourage um, somebody to listen for? It, um, well, uh, yes, once they get into the office. Okay. Um, so I'm still on that first phone contact. Um, so, uh, that, yeah, I want to get into that. Do we have time to go well, into I, that we, part we of Well, we don't it? have to really get to that mm -hmm. yet because the thing is, is that it, are there questions that a client should ask while they're on the phone? Um, well, you know, you, it depends on what you're looking for. Like I said on the first segment, if you're looking for a private practice, maybe you do want to know about the credentialing, a little bit more about what that doctor specializes in or has had advanced studies in, uh, if that interests you. Uh, some people want to know where you went to school. They, you know, I, I, it's, uh, you know, like your alma mater, which I'm very proud of and, and it's always fun to say because I'm from Dallas and I went to Baylor, so it's the you know, school of choice, but, um, you know, if you have special needs, you want to make sure those are going to be uh, accomplishable at that office, too. I think about a lot of the people that are in transition, okay, and when you're in a transition like that, um, what are some of the things that, that you know, we've, we've found them on the, on the internet, we've called them. I know as we move uh -huh. into this mm -hmm. next I segment, mm -hmm. we're really going to mm -hmm. look at, mm -hmm. okay, now you're in the office, mm -hmm. okay, mm -hmm. And so, folks, you're, you're really going to want to hang on because in the office, for me, was like going to a spa, but <laughs> not all the dentists do that. If you're finding one out of the state or if you're, you know, just kind of looking for somebody, there's always the steps. There's the things that you can look for that are telltale signs that you're in the right place. This is the Business Spotlight. We'll be right back. You can become a published author. Discover a system that will lead you from idea to having your book on the bookshelves. Bob Bear pulls back the curtain at the More Power to Publish workshop. Watch and learn how to follow the step-by-step -step plan to turn your idea into a published book. Learn more at morepowertopublish.com. And welcome back to the Business Spotlight. I'm Pat Dewar. Dr. Mary Swift is with us today. 2011-2012 Consumer Choice Award winner in the Dallas area for cosmetic dentistry. We're talking about, well, the dental experience from where, how do you find somebody to when you get them on the phone, set the appointment. Dr. Mary, we've gotten all the way there. <laughs> We're in the door. We're in the door. What do we, that's what, all good. What do we want to look for? That's all good because a lot you can tell a lot by that phone co conversation. So they've done their job well getting you in. Um, uh, my girls in my office it's a, uh, are told never to ask a patient their name. Never. Really? You stand up and you 
reach over and you shake their hand and you say, welcome, Patrick, to my office. I tell my girls, they need to know more about that patient when they come in that front door than that patient expects them to know about them. And a lot of that has to do with the information that's gathered on the phone when the appointment is made. Um, we make sure that we know everything about your insurance. Now that's a luxury. You might not find that in every practice and that's a plus. And if you're using any kind of dental benefits, um, <laughs> believe you me, people don't know what their benefits are. They have no idea. And so it just a little simple verifying their insurance for them is a big plus for my, for my patients. They, they really appreciate when I know more when my staff knows more about their insurance than they do themselves. Um, so you walk in, you're greeted by name. Right. Um, you are not asked what you're there for or what your name is. Because <laughs> if they don't know, <laughs> anyway. Uh, so, it, you know, sit down, make yourself comfortable. Is it comfortable? You know, a lot, it's uh, pretty trendy nowadays to offer the patient something to drink while they're waiting and make them as comfortable as possible. Um, and this, again, is if you're in private practice setting. I don't know that you would find that in a clinic setting. Um, uh, and here's where I, I, I give, give the viewers permission to eavesdrop, if you can. Listen in. Listen in to how the staff members treat each other. Do they say please and thank you to each other? Are they polite? Do they look like they're happy to be there? Do they look like they enjoy working there? Um, same thing on phone conversations. Uh, sometimes you can get um, a customer that needs, um, needs a little time and care to, uh, to help and, and does, is the person on the other end of the line uh, patient. patient with yeah. that. Yeah, so patience, kindness, all of that in the reception room and cleanliness, again, is what you should see out in the reception room. What about listening for, I mean, it's the, it's the age old thing of drills in the background. Oh, well, yeah, I know, I will. <laughs> is there any, do, do they, is you know that's kind of a. It is, it's, <laughs> a, it's the way it is. Now there, there's been some, you know, major improvements and I'm Dallas Laser Dentistry, because lasers are, uh, you know, are, 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 we're supposed to be what takes the place of the drill, but uh, if you've ever heard a dental laser, I think it sounds worse. It's really pop, 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 pop. It's crazy loud and scary to me. So that wasn't the answer. We tried. <laughs> uh, drills are here. You know, and, and for some people, that's what sets them off. Uh, some people, it's the injection. There's diff everybody has something unique about themselves that makes coming to the dentist difficult. And one of the ways to know if you've got a good match with your new dentist is if they can identify that, identify it quickly, put you at ease, and make the rest of the appointment as comfortable as possible. Now, I know that you're unique in that you've actually really worked with your girls. One, you pick them, or your, your folks, you pick them well, you, but you train them continuously. And that's something that the train, the the, the average consumer probably wouldn't pick up. Me as a sales trainer kind of person, that I got it. Mm -hmm, and I mm -hmm. loved it because they, it, it's something that they really knew how to read you and well, work with you. Well, you got to have a captain, though, to, of the ship to steer things. The temperament of the office, the rhythm of how things are run, uh, calmness. Uh, and, and so it, it, it's, it, they've listened to me. For many years, I've got some staff that have been with me for a long time. We, uh, we treat from the heart. One of the nicest things about dentistry is there are options uh, for every situation, every person's personal situation. You know, sometimes you want to go that way uh, with a plan because it fits the lifestyle of the patient better now. With a plan that, you know, maybe in a few years we'll be able to do a little bit more. So, you know, find somebody when you're looking for a dentist that gets to know where you are in your life. You know, I have patients say, I'm going to be losing my benefits, I'm going to retire uh, soon. What do, you, do you see anything that, that I should be looking at mm -hmm. and planning for? 
and find somebody that knows where you are in the world and what your needs are and can listen to your, uh, your specific set-offs and, and, uh, and appease you and get you through the appointments comfortably. So we've gotten back that far now. We've gotten into the chair. That's really good. I know that as we, as we you know, what we've really created is how to take you from your searching, your calling, your sitting, and what to begin to notice while you're there, see, and ask even when you get in front of the dentist. As we go into this next segment, we'll wrap up a lot of this, but even beyond that, show you some tools of, well, what you really should get from your dentist. This is Pat Dewar. This is Spotlight. We'll be right back. You can become a published author. Discover a system that will lead you from idea to having your book on the bookshelves. Bob Bear pulls back the curtain at the More Power to Publish workshop. Watch and learn how to follow the step-by-step -step plan to turn your idea into a published book. Learn more at morepowertopublish.com. And welcome back to the Business Spotlight. This is Pat Dewar. We have a great show going with uh, Dr. Mary Swift of Dallas Laser Dentistry in the DFW area. She's the 2011-2012 both years, uh, Consumer Choice Award winner for co uh, cosmetic dentistry. Um, Dr. Mary, we've showed them what to do on how to choose a dentist from the website to the phone call, how to, uh, what to expect there. And then now they're in the building, but now they're in the chair. Now they're in the chair. I hope this is helping. I don't know, you know, I, I, I worry when I have to send a patient off, you know, because they're moving and you know, what their experience is going to be. And um, I, I have lots and lots of patients that actually come back because they, they travel and, you know, come back a couple times a year anyway. One from Russia. That's my <laughs> nice. longest traveling. <laughs> that's, a, that's, a, that's a waste. That's funny. <laughs> um, so people are generally very loyal to their dentist, and, and we love that in dentistry. It, it, it sets us up to form great relationships with our patients. Um, so it's like losing a, a, you know, sending a child off when you have to um, let them out into the, away from your own practice and finding another one. So uh, I found myself in a position wanting to make that experience as comfortable as possible for patients. And when they're moving away and they ask me, how do I find a good dentist? You know, just to recap, we talked about what kind of practice to look for, private practice or a clinic setting. Um, we talked about what to expect when you pick up the phone, you know, courteous, not too bubbly. If they call you sweetie, hang up, you know, <laughs> they're not your sweetie. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> uh, professional, you know, and, 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 um, and, and when you get to the office, you know, they should know who you are, not ask who you are. Um, so now we're back in the chair and the dentist. Um, most importantly, the minute you get back into the operatory is what we call it, operatory. It's the room where the chair is and the work is done. Um, cleanliness number one. Cleanliness above all. Um, and don't mistake clutter for lack of cleanliness because there are, not me, I'm like clean desk, you know, immaculate, nothing on the countertop kind of girl, but there are very, very, very good dentists who are kind of packed rats. <laughs> you think? It's a personality <laughs> thing. We have all these tools and fun little materials to play with. But, and, but clean. It should be a clean setting. Um, the, the, and and in, in the back as well as in the front, and let me explain that. In the dental office, there's two zones. The front where the accounts receivable and the receptions and the business end of the practice is taking place. And then we call it the back where all the work is done. The dental hygienist cleaning your teeth, the assistant and the doctor doing treatment. Um, the communication between the front and the back should be as open uh, and transparent as possible because that's where most offices, in my opinion, uh, drop the ball is that communication from what's done in the back to what's billed out in the front. Um, and I didn't mention when you pick up that phone to make that first contact, hopefully you're hearing computer keys. Yeah. <laughs> True, not paper. <laughs> not paper, not somebody saying, hold on, I got to get up and pull your chart. <laughs> Hang up quickly. <laughs> <laughs> mm, I'm tongue in cheek. 
no pun intended, but that's, you know, there's a, those are little clues to know whether you're talking to somebody that is um, up in their profession and current, au courant, or uh, mm, maybe a little more laid back. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, I know that you guys do a lot with uh, keeping up with the, the technology. And, and, and in fact, one of the things that I thought was really good is that you really listen to your patients. And you are excellent at setting up a, um, when I say listening to your patients, I want to say, and then responding. Because I know on your website, I, I was there and I noticed that you had put together something that does that. And why don't we look at that? I have. I've worked every position in the office. I've been a dental assistant, I've been a hygienist, and now a dentist. And it's made me a better uh, caregiver on every level for my patients. One of the things I think I've learned over the years is where to put my technology money. Uh, you know, you can buy uh, the latest and greatest and it sit on a shelf, or you can figure out within your practice what's going to make uh, the patient experience uh, better. My practice uh, offers several cosmetic procedures uh, that are uh, enhancing smiles with whitening, um, with Invisalign, the invisible braces, uh, with porcelain work. So we see people's lives improve when we, when we give them a beautiful smile. That's rewarding. The latest and, and, and greatest uh, tool I have uh, that keeps me excited is probably the Invisalign, Invisible Braces. It has allowed me to evolve my practice into a philosophy of move it, don't remove it. In other words, where I was before I had that tool, move it where I want it instead of putting something on top of it. Staying involved uh, in dentistry on every level, local, state and national makes me a better dentist for my patients. I would hope that my patients would feel that from that phone call, even that initial phone call, all the way through to the end of their experience, that it was the best care they've gotten ever. When a patient, especially a very nervous patient uh, with some dental anxiety, when they send their friends and family to us, then we know we've done a good job. That's the biggest compliment we can receive. Our patients are our life and our livelihood and we appreciate every single patient that walks in that door. These are our family and we treat them that way.